Okay. That's right. What's going on, Orlando? How you doing out there today? I am doing well. <laughs> Look, it's awesome. We y'all won't believe who we got on the air today and what we're talking about. And the way the weather is nice out, listen, get out, do something with yourself. You know what I say? Shake it off. Shake it off. Look, so introduce yourself to us. Uh, this is State Senator Geraldine Thompson. I served in the Florida legislature for 10 years. Uh, six years in the Florida House of Representatives and four years in the State Senate. And I'm so excited to be talking to Jimmy Williams about bringing Juneteenth back to Central Florida. Oh, my goodness. So now, listen, let's get it clear. This was one of your pet peeves right here. You did this for a while. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so. We we started Juneteenth, and we did Juneteenth for about 20 years. And uh, then some other municipality took it over, but we're bringing it back now. Uh, to Orlando and the Central Florida area. Oh, that's awesome. So, you know, I was there for a lot of those shows. I enjoyed every moment because you had all kind of superstars coming. Are we expecting to see this kind of same atmosphere this year? Well, we're Juneteenth? considering uh, a lot of different uh, a lot of different talent, and all okay. of it is going to be fantastic. Some of the groups that we've considered include uh, Harold Melvin and, and the, the Blue, Blue Notes. Notes. Yeah, right. so we've been talking to Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. Uh, but we're going to start uh, on Friday with the spoken word and having poetry and music, jazz, a lot of good food, things to drink at the Wells Built Museum uh, on that Friday. And Saturday, which is where you usually work with me, we're going to bring talent like maybe Harold Melvin in the Blue Notes, maybe uh, Mary Mary. We're bringing a big band uh, out of Tallahassee, Tallahassee Night Live. They're going to be with us on Saturday for the street festival. We have vendors who sell food and clothing and artwork. And so it's just a wonderful day for families on that Saturday. On Sunday, we come back to the Wells Bill for a gospel brunch. And again, delicious food, good company, and gospel music at the Wells Built, which is a former black-owned and operated hotel. So we need to remind people about that. It was built in the late 1920s. And during the days of segregation, it provided lodging to people like Thurgood Marshall and Jackie Robinson and all kind of musicians. Count Basie, Lionel Hampton, Duke Ellington, Billy Holiday, all of those people yes. were here in Central Florida. So we've got to uh, raise and elevate who we are and who we have been so that we educate the community that music has been a part of our DNA, a part of our heritage yes, for, for a very, yeah. very long time. Yes. And so after the music festival, uh, we come back for the gospel brunch. And then on June 19th, which is actually the day when Juneteenth is generally recognized, we're going to show the uh, highly acclaimed play, A Vote, A Voice, uh, which I wrote and which was premiered at the Dr. Phillips Center for the Performing Arts in 2015. Awesome. And so it was filmed and uh, it'll be showing at a wonderful location here in Central Florida. So it's going to be a wonderful weekend and we're inviting everyone to get involved. Wow, you're so knowledgeable about it, all the stuff you got going on. I'm sitting here like, man, did I miss anything last year or the year before? Tell me, what would you think they would just um, uh, just have the people so excited to come out uh, about a certain part of the play uh, that this written in that you find very touching? Well, the play covers a lot. Uh, it covers um, our struggle to gain the right to vote here in Central Florida. And one of the uh, scenes that it focused on happened in Okoe in 1920 when a man named July Perry and his friend Mose Norman went to vote in Okoe and they were told they could not vote because they hadn't paid a poll tax. Well, July Perry uh, used to bring in crews to pick the citrus crops here in Central Florida. So he was well off and he said, I paid every tax I'm supposed to pay. He was 50 years old at the time. Uh, and there was a debate about whether he could vote. He left and went back home to the colored quarters is what it was called in Okoe. And a mob followed him and uh, started shooting into his home. They set the buildings in Okoe on fire. <sighs> 
and people who stayed in the buildings burned uh, and those who ran out were shot to death. So the entire colored quarters in Okoye uh, was destroyed in 1920 during an election day uh, riot. Uh, July Perry was taken out of his home, brought to the Orange County Jail here in Orlando. The mob followed him, took him out of the jail, and hung him wow. uh, from a tree on Orange Blossom Trail, and then uh, fired shots into his body. He was cut down after a couple of days by a black undertaker, and he was buried at the Greenwood Cemetery in a pauper's grave. And remember, I said he was a well-off man. No headstone. Uh, his family was gone. Uh, many members of the community was gone. So there was no one to pay a proper tribute to July Perry. And years ago, um, with a group called the Reconciliation Project, uh, we, uh, with the Re Reconciliation Project, my husband and some other people went to Greenwood Cemetery and put a headstone on the grave of July Perry so that he is given the kind of recognition uh, that he is due. So that's uh, information that is shared in the play. Uh, the, the play, in addition to looking at some of the tragedies in our community, also looks at some of our triumphs, some of uh, the happy times. And a right, lot of those right, right. happy times <laughs> occurred at the South Street Casino with the bands, and yes. uh, this was a favorite place for, there was a military installation on South Street. It was in the area of South and Bumley. Okay. And the military personnel would come over to this area during the weekends and hear the musicians at the South Street Casino. And when they finished playing, they checked into the Wells Built. They had jam sessions until the wee hours of the morning. People who couldn't afford to go into the South Street Casino would just stand outside. Right. And they'd <laughs> stroll by and see these flamboyantly dressed entertainers get off of the big buses with their names on it. And so that was just a, a thrilling sight uh, for them. So there were uh, good times and there were, you know, we have to look at history, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And that's we right. have to that's accept right. Right. that that's all part of who we are and where we've come from. That's, that's very correct right there. I, I was at the German team celebration and I, I was just like, wow, this is worth keeping alive. This is what educate people to get them about what's going on. Now, I, I attended the show and at the uh, of the, of, the, of, the, of the play, and my best part out of the play was when you, at the end of the play, how you make history and play your part of being the whole play. I was sitting there like, wow. Well, uh, I, I wrote the play, and um, a professor from the University of Central Florida directed the play, and he called for actors to come, and he screened them, and he selected the actors. And I kept asking him, well, who's going to play Geraldine Thompson? Yeah. He said, well, we have somebody good. We're going to, you know, it's going to be somebody really good. Okay. No, wait a minute. You're going to tell me that it was, they did this to you? They did this to me. They did this to me. Uh, so what? I said, well, I'd, I'd like to come to the rehearsal and, you know, see how she does if yeah. she's going to represent me. He said, She's going to be really good. Don't worry about it. So just before, a couple of weeks before it was time for the premiere of the play, he said, you're going to play yourself. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> and so I didn't have to um, read the script because I wrote the script. Okay. <laughs> Can't, you can't practice being yourself. Right, right? I, I couldn't practice being myself. I didn't have to uh, rehearse, right? Uh, they, because right. I was in Tallahassee for a lot of that, and they and they were here rehearsing. And so uh, at the end, as you say, they called. Uh, there was a an administrator at Valencia who was leaving and turning over her responsibilities to a new administrator, and that was me. Right. And she called and said, well, I want Geraldine Thompson to come over and let's talk about what's going to happen in the future. And I walked on stage. So you've not been knowing you for a while, but I didn't know you was an actor. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to say, that was my debut. Okay. <laughs> but i tell you something. I noticed at the beginning that um, the young lady, your daughter, Elizabeth and she did, did an awesome presentation of the whole event from the beginning. Yes, I was like, so she an actor too. 
Well, Elizabeth uh, is 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 very versatile. Um, she is a graduate from Florida A and M University School of uh, Graphic Arts and Journalism. So she uh, has studied a lot of what we're talking about. And growing up in my household, okay, 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 <laughs> okay. So okay. she's okay. been exposed to this all of her life. And so she's now uh, going to be back with the museum and will be coordinating many of the things that we're talking about for Juneteenth. Okay, that's what, listen, I'm just, I can't wait to see what y'all put together. I, I'm telling you that right now, because I've been very impressed over the years of uh, all, every time you have, and I can see how uh, the Juneteenth could mean so much to you because of the study and the knowledge that you have I know it's 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 it's, a tr it's just tremendous. Well, many people don't understand the origins of Juneteenth and where it comes from, and they have to realize that from 1861 until 1865. Uh, we were in a civil war where you had the northern states and the southern states fighting each other over the issue of slavery and where the one group of people had the right to own another group of people. Where they do that at. Yeah. So at the end of 1865, at the end of the civil war, how were the people on the plantations going to know that they were now free? So President Abraham Lincoln sent Union soldiers on horseback and they rode throughout the South, stopping in different places. They stopped in Tallahassee, the Knot House, uh, May 20th of 1865. And they read the Emancipation Proclamation saying that you were free. Now, Florida was part of the Confederacy. Florida left the Union and became part of the Confederate States of America. So Florida had to come back into the Union. Uh, so they came and read the Emancipation Proclamation, but had other places that they needed to go. And the last group of people that they got to were in Galveston, Texas. And they got to them on June 19th, 1865. And so that's where the, the word Juneteenth, looking at June 19th, they just... You know how we make up words. We, yeah, we, we yeah, shorten yeah, yeah, words. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know I'm country. I'm going to say something you're going to understand. And I'm going to say something you're not. <laughs> so instead of always saying June 19th, 1865, they just said Juneteenth. Okay. Juneteenth. Yeah, yeah, we, and so that's where it comes from. But uh, a celebration started then in 1865 with people um, dancing and singing and making speeches and athletic competitions. You, if you realize that you are free after years in bondage, it's of course, it's time to celebrate. So that's where the celebration comes from. And as you said, we started it uh, in Orlando 20 years ago. We're bringing it back and it's going to be bigger and better than ever. I just got one question. Yes. You asked me earlier, do I have my band? Yes. Our oh, second phase playing do we have a job? <laughs> well, you know, second phase has been part of it from uh, for a, yeah, very, for a very long, long time. time. That's right. So we're working out all the details. For That's second what we're phase. talking about. For second right. phase. <laughs> you know, I had to put me out there a little yeah. bit. <laughs> well, you know, I asked you. That's right. That's I right. Listen, so Thompson, it's been awesome having you on the show. Uh, we're looking forward to the event. We have about a minute left. Is there anything else you might want to share? Well, with we want everybody audience? to put this on the calendar. Uh, we're a couple of months out. But you need to start planning now and uh, know that from June 15th through the 19th, we're going to be celebrating Juneteenth 2017 in Orlando with lots of different activities. Uh, bring the children. We're going to educate the children regarding our history. Uh, bring your family. Bring uh, the elders so that we can get some recordings. We want to record the history of some of the pioneers from this community so we can make it part of what we have to offer at the Wellsbuilt Museum, which was the former Wellsbuilt Hotel. That's awesome. That's awesome. I like to say, you know, uh, to some, you're a former Senator Thompson. But for me, you are Senator Thompson. All right? I put a record. Well, I want everybody to know. Yeah. Uh, you know, I started with you. You gave me a lot of great opportunities, Senator. And I just want to let you know that I love you and what you have done well, in this you. community. It's, it's an awesome thing. Thank and you. Some people walk. But you talk. Hey, listen, this is TJWS Radio Network. You have been on the show today listening to uh, Senator Thompson here at the Wells Bit Museum. Hey, she'd like to say thank you guys for listening. Senator Thompson, you want to say bye to our listening audience? Well, I want to say uh, 
not by, but just I'll see you at Juneteenth, June 15th through the 19th in Orlando.